My name is Raquel Saraswati. I am an activist and I write about the abuses of women in the Muslim world and, and worldwide. I'm Nazi Eftikari. A lot of the human rights work I do is, I think, in reaction to literally, you know, waking up in the morning and taking these events around the world very personally. My name is Nazanin Afshin Jam. I'm a human rights activist, and I focus a lot on women's rights issues. She is a former Miss World Canada. I'm only one person, and sometimes I feel helpless in a, in a, a situation, and I, and I wish there was others around me, and that's why I was so pleased in that salon setting to meet other women who are working on different issues for women's rights. I'm Fahima Hashim from Sudan, and I live there. Islam is my spiritual journey, and it is part of that journey that has brought me here to share with my sisters because I feel like all of you that the struggle for women is our, our struggle. Saudi women aren't allowed to drive themselves to work or even to the doctor's office. The atrocities and the disadvantages perpetrated on women in the name of Islam are real and they're manifold. Serious sexual harassment and attacks on women in Egypt. Groping, stripping and rapes have become increasingly frequent. A mutilation of the body, acid violence. There has been a wave of killings specifically targeting girls who study or women who work. There's a terrible fear of the educated, empowered woman. I have the right of education, I have the right to play, I have the right to sing, I have the right to talk, I have the right to go to market, I have the right to speak up. The Taliban targeted 15-year-old Malala Yousafzai and her friends. He asked for Malala by name and then he shot her. This is one of the most alarming human rights issues in the world. This is being done in the name of some ideology that is full of violence and hatred. The, the causes of crisis have everything to do with the part of tradition and religion, which are clearly about the oppression of women. It's, it's the honestest. The concept of honor, it's very difficult to explain it to Western societies. A lot of it has to do with how women behave and the sexuality of women. Honor is something that is carried and contained in women and is there to be guarded by men. The honor of a family is vested in a woman's body. The honor of a family is vested in what she does and what she says. His honor is connected to what she does and says. It's a misplaced sense of honor. It's a um, harmless word uh, replacing control of male over female. For me and for the girls and boys, because we support boys too, when they give voice to honour, they describe it as being like the weather. It's ever-present, it's all-consuming, it's unpredictable. It's fluid, it's never static, you never know which way it's going to shift and change. And one of the big questions we ask is, what does honour mean to you? And as soon as you ask a victim that question, straight away it unlocks Pandora's box. Female genital cutting. Most commonly done before puberty, some young girls will have their clitoris completely removed to preserve their virginity. Female genital mutilation is not advocated in Islam in any way, shape or form. It doesn't appear in the Quran, but has very much been adopted by some Muslim societies. My cousins were just going for circumcision the next day, so everybody was preparing food and they were making big... Uh, event. So I was in my uncle's house, so I, I went, I had small booklets on how harmful circumcision is. Mm -hmm. And I sneaked up to his room and I gave him the books. Mm -hmm. And I told him, don't do that. You know what happened? He came, because his eldest daughter was circumcised. He came crying and he really asked his daughter to, to, to forgive him and he refused mm -hmm. for the, the other two to be circumcised the next day. When we're talking about the root cause of addressing gender disparity and empowering women, we do have to look at child marriages. There's a, a real kind of a lack of an understanding of what women and girls face once they're forced into a marriage, right? I mean, these marriages are consummated through rape. During sex, I was crying and begging him to stop, but he didn't listen. Then he put his hand on my mouth like this. I couldn't breathe and 
I was crying, but he used me anyway. My sister suffered a horrific marriage. She was a 15-year-old in school that went missing from education, as they still do today, and nobody noticed her missing. And she was gone for nine months and came back as somebody's wife. You know, she missed so much school that she was put back into my year at school. She had a wedding ring on her finger. Um, she spoke English. She just in the middle of her GCSEs. And she never wore Western dress again. And nobody stopped to ask the question why. And I reflect upon that when she died. Um, because she set herself on fire and died, and that's the last picture I remember her looking like that. I think. A mother and father accused of dousing their teenage daughter in acid. Her crime looking at a boy. She turned to look at him. I told her before not to do that. I started beating her. Then her mother brought the acid. It was her destiny to die this way. I don't think people are aware of just how prevalent it is and that it is happening in the United States, that it's increasing here and that it's not such a fluke when it does happen. Her parents beat her after seeing her with a boy. The police are saying the teen was abused because she didn't want to go through with an arranged marriage. Georgia police say he strangled his daughter to protect his family's honor. Muzamal Hassan is accused of beheading his wife after she filed for divorce. And allegedly run down by her own father for becoming too westernized. There was a case in Texas of Sarah and Amina Saeed who were murdered by their father, but what we found out afterward is that they had been regularly abused, they had mm. been sexually abused, that they went to school with bruises, mm. um, and normally a teacher and, or a counselor has the responsibility to report that to the state and the child mm. should be removed from the home. But these girls went to school every day with obvious signs of abuse. Yeah. That, I have to say, is a practice that is happening all the time up and down the UK, where girls are presenting, not believed, or people are thinking, don't lift up right. the hijab, yeah, don't yeah. check the bruises. And she's actually saying, I told them the bruises were there, but they wanted to be careful. We shy away from criticizing anything that's different um, because we don't want to be seen as the type of people who would restrict people's expression. You know, and I, and I think that that's very, very well motivated. Why is it that everybody is afraid to say that Muslim women are deprived of their humanity? Because people are, you know, slapped with these labels of, of being an Islamophobe and people don't want to speak out. And when you do dissent, you are threatened, you are bullied, you are intimidated, and, and that's happening here in the United States. My mother, when I started the organization, the first thing out of her mouth, she said, you're going to get killed. I've had fatwas, I've had death threats, I get hate mail. The threats to rape you, burn your face with acid, I'm afraid all the time. Yeah. Um, but that doesn't mean you can't also be courageous. It's very, very easy to break a, a twig or a stick. But when you bundle them together, mm -hmm. you can't break that. By us coming together, showing a united front, I'm sure we can defeat this. It would be wonderful if all women's organizations understood what this is about and how large it can be. The continuation of this dialogue is in need to make the realization of the importance of women's voices with the support of men and women of other faiths, of other cultures, other communities, because without them we cannot make a change. Mm -hmm.